this problem definitely different than the previous example because here I gave you the circumference. Or like some people say, I gave you the answer and then I asked you for something else. In fact, I asked you for two different things. I asked you for the diameter and the radius. Uh, I would probably and normally use the bottom one here, circumference equals pi times diameter. And what I'm going to show you is something to watch out for if you'd like to use the other one. And Because I could told you, it really doesn't matter. And so here, basically what we're going to do is circumference, we already know that, so fill that in. And that is what, inches? It equals pi, and then diameter is unknown. So this time the variable is not by itself right at the beginning, and so what you have to do is get it by itself. And some people look at pi as a variable, but it's not. It's just that number that's on your calculator, 3.14. It keeps on going. And so what you're going to do is then divide by pi. And you already told me that pi basically does not have a label on it. And so there is no label that cancels out here. You basically would just take it like that. If they ask for the exact answer, that's pretty much what you'd write, 37.7 over pi. That's as good as you can do as far as exact. I would guess on these they will ask you to round. And so let's say on this one they asked to round to, oh, I don't know. I don't think it really matters, but we'll say tenths. What do you come up with for diameter if they ask you to round to the nearest tenth? Twelve. Now, is there a label on that then? Yeah, this label that's right there hasn't been canceled out, so it stays. Inches. That is diameter which means radius is half of that, which is 6. Okay. Any questions on it if you use that one? Now, some of you are maybe using the other formula, and that's not what you're getting for an answer. That's because it's a calculator issue, not an algebra issue. Because if you have it this way, it's 2 times pi times r, you're saying, okay, let's divide by 2 pi. If you type that improperly into your calculator, it will give you the wrong answer because it knows order of operations. So what you have to do is be very careful because this is about what it would look like on your calculator if you type it in just that way. It's going to do multiply, multiply and divide from left to right. So it's going to take 37.7, it's going to divide it by 2, and then multiply by pi, which is not what you want it to do. So how do you fix that problem if you like that particular formula? How do you keep it from doing that? Yeah, put parentheses around that. Because you remember, order of operations says do parentheses first. And so it'll do that first, and then it'll take 37.7 and divide by that. Uh, this is going to potentially be a problem throughout this chapter, so keep that in mind with your calculators. I don't want that to be the problem. I don't want it that you are unable to type it into a calculator to get the answer. Okay. Any questions on example three? And everybody's favorite, they realize that triangles, even though we're talking about circles, still have yet to go away. And they won't. <laughs> they just, they don't. Uh, so calculate the circumference for the following circle. Please realize I put the 3.3 with the dots on it here because 3.3 is just from there to there. So is that the radius? No, it is not. Is it close to the radius? Yes, but the radius is a little bit bigger. Yeah, good job. Basically, it's the hypotenuse of this triangle is still a radius. Some people get lost on that. They always think the radius has to go straight to the right, and that's the only one you can use. No, all radii are the same. And so basically what we have, I'll make it a little bigger to make sure everybody can see it, is a 30, 90, 60 triangle. Now, that doesn't mean this is all the triangles you're going to get. I could give you just any triangle I want. You've got Sokotoa, you've got Pythagorean Theorem, you've got Law of Sines, you've got Law of Cosines, you have all of that stuff from the last chapter. For this one, you've got your cheat sheet, okay, which is going to get you around this. And what I found second hour is a lot of people are getting really good with that cheat sheet. They don't even have to take it out anymore. They've done it. They've got it pretty well figured out. But the problem is I need the hypotenuse. That's what I was already told. Did I ever give you one that goes directly to the hypotenuse from here? I didn't. Yeah, you got to go around. Because remember, across from 30 is the one you can kind of go in any direction you want. And so we've got to get there first. I hope we can agree that it's got to get smaller to be across from 30. And now we have to just decide, did I give you a nice number down there, or did I give you a mean one? That's the one we have to decide. And we have to divide, and what does your cheat sheet say? Divide by square root of 3. So if we do that math, maybe we'll do it down in the corner here. It's 3 square root of 3 divided by square root of 3. So did I give you a nice number, or did I give you a not nice number? Pretty nice, because what is square root of 3 over square root of 3? It is, yeah, well, this ends up being 3, but yeah, square root of 3 over square root of 3 is just 1, right? And so it cancels off, and so this side is 3. 
So is 3 the radius of this circle? No. 3 basically ends up being right there in our bigger pic or our circle picture. Well, we still got to get to the hypotenuse, so it's got to get bigger. So we're going to multiply by 2. Now, some people do all this work, and then they tell me that 3 times 2 is 9. That's because they just squared 3. Don't do that. What is 3 times 2? 6. Another reason they do it is they, they're trying to make it bigger than this, and they think, oh, 9 is way bigger. Let's, let's have that work out. But well, no, it's, not, it's 6. And so 6 centimeters, because your centimeters followed all the way around this triangle. So that's our radius. Well, if all I asked you for a radius, well, we'd be done. But I did kind of ask you to find circumference here. Uh, so either you can use this formula and just double the 6, or you can pretty much just use this formula. So circumference equals 2 pi times 6. Yes, and for those of you very, very clever and very, very observant, it's the exact same problem we just did on the last example. And so your circumference should be no surprise that it comes out to be 37.7. But again, if they ask for in terms of pi, or if they ask uh, exact, well, for exact, you'd say 12 pi, right? That's what you would say if that's what was asked. And the label here would be centimeters, because the only centimeters in the problem is right there. Because does this 2 have a label on it? No. Does pi have a label on it? No. So the only label are centimeters, and so that's how it ends up that way. And yes, it is approximately 37.7, because that's basically what you did in the last example. So please keep in mind the triangles I give you, it doesn't have to be a 30, 60, 90. Maybe all you need is Pythagorean theorem or Sokotoa or law of signs. Who knows? So keep all of those tools in mind. Do you have any questions starting with the circles? No? Okay.